Why should you watch this tutorial? This tutorial is your gateway to mastering the minting and deployment process on the KRC20 protocol, empowering you to take full control of your operations without relying on third-party tools. By understanding the ins and outs of these processes, you'll be able to avoid unnecessary fees that often come with using external services. Not only will you save money, but you'll also gain the knowledge needed to or develop your own tools, potentially creating an additional income stream. What's included in this tutorial? You'll get a direct access to the code for a basic KRC, a 20 minting and deployment app, complete with a detailed walkthrough of its components and instructions on how to customize it to suit your needs. This open source project also comes with a handy tool for transferring CASPA, allowing you to manage your assets effortlessly. Additionally, you'll find a private key generator that quickly creates new private keys and corresponding wallet addresses, streamlining the setup process. Whether you are a developer looking to expand your skill set or an enthusiast wanting to deepen your understanding of KRC20 tokens, this tutorial offers valuable insights that can help you stand out in the rapidly evolving world of this technology. First, we'll set up the environment by cloning the repository and installing the necessary dependencies. You'll need to install BAN by using the direct URL pointing to the shell script. After running the installation script, make sure to verify that the BAN command is working properly. Once confirmed, you can proceed with installing the required packages or dependencies for the, uh, the project. For more details on what's needed, take a look at the package below JSON file, which lists all the dependencies. Currently, I'm using public packages to create the private key. However, in the future, I plan to switch to the ones included in the Caspa Wasm. As you can see, this app is utilizing elements from the Caspa Wasm We'll start by going back to the readme file in the repository. From there, navigate to the link at aspectron.org and find the WASM file link in the list. I'll be using the latest release for this uh, demonstration. Download the WASM file directly into your folder and extract it. After extracting, Locate the Node.js folder that contains the Caspa JavaScript libraries. Copy this folder and rename it to WSM, placing it right at the base path of your app. Once in the, everything is set up, we'll dive into generate keys, which generates a random private key and a corresponding mnemonic phrase. These keys are essential for securing your Caspa wallet. As we walk through the steps, we'll highlight the importance of keeping your private key and mnemonic phrase secure. This demonstration will show how to quickly generate these keys. But remember, if you plan to use them for storing Caspa, ensure that you store them in a safe place and do not share them with anyone. Here's the function that generates a random 24-word mnemonic, and from it, after validating and converting it to a seed, the private key. You don't need to connect to the Caspa node to use it. Simply call execute the function with one run, and you'll get the mnemonic and private key directly on the standard output ready to use. It's as simple as that.
As you can see, we have generated a new private key with the associated mnemonic and wallet address. Let's check the balance in the Explorer. Currently is zero. Now, I will check the address from another wallet I previously created, which has some balance on uh, Testnet 10. If you need KS on Testnet 10, I recommend mining it directly or requesting some in the Caspa Discord uh, server in the Testnet channel. Alternatively, you can share your Caspa test address in the comments or on Twitter, and I can send you some. Next, we'll proceed to transfer funds to this new address uh, using my private key. Remember, I'm using random keys for this demonstration. Never share your keys. I will use my app, Senkaspa. TS to send 2,000 cash to my new wallet. Let's check the new balance in the online explorer now. We're ready to start minting. Let's take a peek at the minting app file. Here you can see the elements being used from the WASM libraries and, uh, and the arguments for this uh, app, which you can call uh, from the command line. You also have the flexibility to change the default values, such as the ticker or the priority fees. You can choose to bring in more log details during execution by using debug or uh, keep it simple with info. Additionally, you can set a timeout between the commit and reveal operation of the script. I'm currently using 20 seconds between these steps. This uh, script is configured to run on testnet 11 for now. It determines the Caspa testnet address or public key from the private key provided. You'll also find the RPC client connection to the node here, and most importantly, the part where uh, the uh, KRC20 data uh, is defined in JSON format. The way this uh, script is built is similar to how Casplex uh, has defined it in the documentation. We then generate a P2SH address from a script by creating a script hash. The resulting P2SH address can only be spent by providing the original script that hashes to the script hash stored in the address. Next. We create our first transaction by collecting uh, the necessary entries from the UTXOs uh, to the P2SH address. This is part of a commit and reveal operation, but we don't send the script with the KRC20 minting operation yet. After signing and submitting the transaction, we wait for the hash value in return. Once we have it, we retrieve the UTXO entries from the P2SH address to use in the next transaction. The new transaction is partially signed it locates the first unsigned transaction input with an empty signature script to identify where to apply the signature during the signing process. The identified input is then signed with the private key and the pay to script hash signature script is encoded to finalize it. Finally, we wait for the reveal transaction to be accepted. Let's move to the Casplex homepage and then to the documentation. In the documentation, you can view all the tokens that have already been created. As you can see, I previously created a token called TChimp. We'll select this token and proceed with a mint operation. But before that, let's confirm that our new address doesn't have any prior operations. Now, let's build our command. First, copy the private key of the new wallet and set the debug level. Make sure we are using testnet 10 with a priority fee of zero. I'll set the output amount for the commit operation to 0.2 to avoid issue with the storage mass. This amount will be reclaimed during the reveal process anyway. Oops, I almost forgot to set the priority fee.
here's the important part. I need to set a gas fee of at least one gas or the operation will be rejected. Remember, don't go too low with the first transaction output amount or it will be rejected. The bigger, the better. And now it's time to run the command. We have a timeout of 20 seconds per operation to allow some time for maturity. I'll try to improve this later by directly listening to the UTXO events, but this will do the trick for now. The reveal has been submitted. Let's wait for acceptance. And we're done. Let's check how it appears in the KRC20 indexer. Here we have our first successful minting process. We can also check the token balance using the address. Now, let's use the same app to perform a deployment. The only differences between a deploy and a mint operation are the data in the script and the gas fee. Following the Gasplex documentation, we'll modify the data structure, rename the ticker to chimpc, and set a different max supply and limit per mint operation. We'll change the gas fee to 1,000 gas. Once that's done, we're ready to proceed. Let's accelerate this part of the video. Now, we can check the new token that has been deployed using the indexer API, and there it is. We can also verify the deployed transaction using the new API endpoint from Casplex. I hope you found this content valuable. Don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel for more tutorials and insights like this. Also, be sure to follow me on Twitter to stay updated with the latest developments in this technology and beyond. Let's keep exploring and learning together. Until the next time, cheers.